All right, lads. Welcome back to me podcast, Cheaper Than Therapy. Mick Thomas here. How are you? How you doing, guys? Thanks for liking, subscribing, and sharing. Coming on back. I do appreciate that. I appreciate it a lot. Actually, uh, get your... Get it wherever you're getting your podcast from, right? I'm over on YouTube. If you're over there watching it on YouTube, just give it a subscribe, give it a thumbs up, a thumbs down, a comment if you like it, if you don't like it, if you agree with anything I'm saying, if you disagree, uh, if you fact check me on any of my uh, stuff that I have said, I would love to love to hear from you. I am working on something now when I talk about videos and stuff. I'm sitting down with a producer and when I talk about it, I go, I, I'll point here and the video, we can watch the video together. Right, so sometimes me instead of me going, go out and find it yourself, Google, whatever it is, right? Google whatever you want to Google, and then they, I will give you the video live, so you don't, you know, I don't have to make it up. And nobody wants to do homework. Nobody wants to do homework. So uh, that's coming soon. That is coming soon. And come see me live, live wherever. Come see me in person. Come up, touch me. Not in a crazy way give it a little poke you know maybe just a quick hello take a picture move on move on we don't need to get each, know each other that personally uh upcoming shows listen i got a lot of stuff going on in new york city look at that i didn't even realize i was wearing a comic strip live i'm there i'm in there tonight actually two more shows i'm at the comedy center i'm at gotham comedy club my west side comedy club i'm all over the city right come see me and the big one november 8th november 9th mohegan sun casino in wilkesbury Pennsylvania. Cannot wait to get back to Mohegan Sun for Wise Crackers Comedy Club. Uh, love that. Tickets are on sale now, up this week. Just up this week. I do have other stuff coming up which I'll let you know of a few little appearances on Long Island. Right? Don't worry, Long Island people. You get to see it. Uh, and I do have other stuff coming up. Uh, working on Florida. New Orleans. New Orleans. A lot of gigs coming up. I'm going up to LA again. I'm going to back to Utah. Uh, I'm going lots of places, and I got a lot of cruise ships coming up, which I'm, which I am excited about. Uh, just getting off, you know, Long Island is always is always good, isn't it? It's always fun to get off Long Island, no matter who you are, unless you are um, a Long Island person, you know, like a Morlock, you know, to cave people that dwell. Long Island is whatever. Anyway, let's talk about this week. We had, like, I again, as I always think to myself, I don't know what I'm going to do, what am I going to talk about. Sometimes I sit down, I hit record, and I do not know what I am going to speak of. But of course, the universe and God Almighty has given me great things to just sit back, joke around with. So let's talk about the first one, right? Let's talk about the first one, which is on on uh, everybody's everybody's mind, top of their dome, is the, uh, the the debate. The debate. Now I already did an episode about the debate last time when Donald Trump uh, went up against uh, Joe Biden, Joe Biden, and now this time he went up against Kamala Harris. Now I was watching the debate and I was like, first of all, it was a mistake. I shouldn't have watched it. I was tired. What was I doing? Like this week, you really understand how flat out, hence the glasses, by the way. Some people say, oh, you wear glasses because it's like you can feel secure when you insult people. And it's like you don't have to look at yourself and you can hide behind the glasses. No, I work so hard, lads. I work so hard for you people. Like all this week, New Jersey, I was in Uncle Vinny's comedy club. Wednesday, Thursday night, getting home after midnight, up at 4.30 in the morning. The eyes have taken a bit bags, bags under my eyes. You know the way New York has this ban on, on plastic bags now? Don't worry about it. I got big bags. I got Vince Vaughn eyes. Susan Sarandon. I met Susan Sarandon. She's a lovely woman, actually. Very lovely woman. She's tiny and still sexy, by the way, for her age. But uh, yeah, Susan Sarandon. I got Susan Sarandon eyes. And uh, that's one of the reasons I wear the glasses, because I do record this episode pretty early in the morning. Pretty, pretty, pretty early. So, um... Yeah, so I, I was tired, you know, and I, I get, oh, I'm tired now. And and, and Sunday, you're not, you're not listening to this probably till Monday, but I'm going up to Villa Roma upstate again. Villa Roma is one of those places where it's all old Italian people and it's like couples who should have, you know, thrown in the towel 20 years ago, but God bless them for keeping and hanging on. That's that's their journey. But anyway, so I, that was the first thing. The debate was so late. I don't know why it was so late. It was in Pennsylvania. Why not have it at a normal time? Why not have it at 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock? I understand people have to get home from work, you know, get home from work from the, the four jobs that they have uh, because the economy, which nobody answered that question, which is, I'm sure, which is our main concern. Uh, nobody really addressed that at all whatsoever. Nobody addressed it in the slightest, actually, which is, 
the main thing. But uh, so let's talk about the bit, right? For it was a fucking, it was a shit show, right? It was an absolute shit show. Uh, nobody won, especially us. We didn't win. You know what I mean? Here's the thing. Let, let, let's talk about. Let's talk about from an outsider, outsider's perspective, because there's a, the debate ain't going to change anyone's mind. Let's just let's start with that. The debate ain't going to change anybody's mind in the slightest. Okay. Like Donald Trump could have went up there, like opened his pants, and he just went, "Okay, watch this. This is going to be the greatest shit you've ever seen." And he just takes a massive turd on the stage. Right, and the Donald Trump people are gonna go. Yeah, I'm still voting for Donny boy, still voting for Donny. And Kamala Harris is gonna could have went up and said, you know, whatever. What what's her main thing is abortions. She loves abortions, can't get enough of abortions. And she's gonna go, we we should have abortions uh, up until six years old when the kids just they, they want to go down for a nap. The kids won't go for a nap. They're cranky. Uh, you've been a shitty parent and given them too much sugar. The kid is too much for you. So I think a six year old kid, we could have an abortion at six years old. So she could have said that, and the, the Kamala people were like, I'm still voting for Kamala Harris. So debates don't do anything. And the reason why they don't do anything because they, they all lie. It's all just a show. It ain't changing anybody's mind. Well, it goes to the undecided. No, it doesn't. There is no such thing as an undecided in this election. There is no undecided in this election. They might say there is, but they're secretly people who A, will just not vote. I know a bunch of those people that go, I'm out, I'm not, I can't participate in this. Or they're the ones that go in behind the curtain and they just shlink, yeah, yeah, I'm very undecided right now. Shlink, Trump, right? They, they don't want to tell anybody. So they come out and they go, undecided means I'm not proud of my pick. That's my theory on it anyway. But if you were an alien, right, not one of those shitty ones that come over from other countries, smelly, uh, but if you were like, you know, you were an alien, you came down from, and you just, you walked in, you turned on the television for the first time, and you go, all right, here's a president debate, you probably would have went with Kamala Harris, right, based on how she carried herself in relation to, you know, whatever, with a Donny, like, like my, here's my point, let's go, let's go look at some of the things that, that, that Mr. Trump did, that Donald did wrong. Um, and you may disagree, whatever, put them in the comments if you disagree, you're, you're full of shit, McThomas. And again, this is where I need the video just to play the clips, and we will expand, the show will expand, or die at episode 300. I haven't decided if the show gets bigger at 300, or I pull the plug and just go, I can't do this anymore. But anyway, um, so he, he, he goes up, and he, uh, the, you know, the first thing I, I, I found a fault with is when he said, um... It talk when she 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 was very smart. She was very smart, by the way. When she just kind of she's like, oh, look at his rallies or shit, knowing well enough that Donnie's got the ego. Where Donald wasted two minutes on, uh, you know, oh my rallies are the best. You gotta come to my rallies. Nobody goes to our rallies, but, you know. And and two minutes at the best rallies. People say they have never been to such a rally. Uh, the KKK showed up at my rally and they go, this is the best rally. You know, Martin Luther King showed up and they marched for their rally and all the blacks came to my rally and we have the best rallies. Two minutes was a waste of time, Donnie. You could have just went straight to the point. Um, right? And, and, then, and then there was that moment and then, of course, the most famous moment of it, which has gone viral. Uh, they're eating the cats and the dogs. That was more like Christopher Walken. That wasn't Donald Trump. They're eating the cats and the dogs in Springfield. Right? That was not Donnie at all. That was definitely uh, Christopher Walken. Uh, the the dogs and the cats are losing the tails. Um, anyway, I don't do impressions really. But anyway. So, and that, of course, went viral. And that was Donnie. Look, that, that's a rumor. For those of you watching, not uh, watching on YouTube, if you're just listening, I'm doing air quotes. That was a rumor that, that, that immigrants are eating the cats and dogs. And I'll get to that in a second. I will get to that in a second. Then Kamala Harris went up, and any time to ask her a question, she just, just straight up lied. Straight up lied. She has changed her policies. Basically, her only job, and here's what I got from Kamala Harris, right? The thing I got from Kamala Harris was you just want to win this and you're going to say anything you want just to win this. She's like a guy on a date who's trying to get laid. You know, like, we, trust me, ladies, you don't understand this. When you meet a man for the first time, you're not meeting that man for the first time. He is saying anything he can to fuck you anything at all your religious beliefs are his religion your political beliefs are his your favorite show 
No matter what it is. No matter how shitty, because women don't watch good shows. I'm not being misogynistic. Women don't watch, you know, oh, I was watching Downton Abbey. Find me a guy that goes, can't go out tonight, lads. Downton Abbey is on. Never happens. Never happens. No man that's not a gay man won't watch, will watch something like Downton Abbey. So we, we're, we, we just morph into whatever we can say to you, you know, to get you to fuck, you know what I mean? Like, I listen to Dave Matthews Band. Oh, I love Dave Matthews Band, me. What? What? Oh, really? You love Dave Matthews? Oh, I do. I can't get enough of Dave Matthews. What's your favorite song? Don't make me choose. Don't. Oh, I'm not doing that to Davey. I wouldn't do that to Dave. I, oh, no way. I, oh, I would, it's Sophie's choice all over again. I can't pick me favorite kid. Don't ask me to choose what my favorite Dave Matthews song is. Oh, and all we want to do is bang you. That's all we want to do. That's the vibe Kamala Harris gave. That's the vibe that she gave. Because there's all video footage if you go looking for it. And again, I wish I had it because I would show it. Having said that, if I did show it, I would be taken down again. I would be shadow banned. Uh, as we know, YouTube is sorry, YouTube. Uh, they are uh, they they belong to the liberal establishment, um, so you can't say any negative about that side of the fence. And she just lied the whole like the whole thing. Now let's talk about was it a fair fight? Now I've been in many fights in my life in the ring, outside the ring. It reminded me like it, it was. It's like remember the remember the school fights. I don't know if there's any girls probably don't remember this. Uh, you may not have had this. If you're ladies now, I don't know if you were pieces of trash when you were kids, but me boys used to have fights. Right, that's it. After school, three o'clock behind the bike shed, right? And you're surrounded in a circle. Fight, 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 fight. And you got your friend with you. You know, you bring your friend with you. He's your second, right? You always have to have a second. I feel Donald Trump should have had a second to just lean into his ear. Don, don't, don't mention the cats and dogs, right? That's going to sort itself out. Don't mention that. Because every, every, you went with your, friend and, and what your second is for is not to jump in and protect you your second isn't the one to jump in and and stop other people from jumping in your second is to console you on the way home when you're after getting your you got a bloody nose and your clothes are dirty that's what it's for no you didn't do that bad you know you didn't do, you didn't know you, you got a few lucky shots in that's what he's for and then when you turn to your friend and go I, I, i'm not crying I, i'm not crying he just hit me in the nose and when you get hit in the nose your eyes water up i'm not crying and your friend is supposed to go, yeah, no, of course you're not. No, nah, man, you're not crying. You're not crying. Don't, don't worry about that. That's what your second is for. And he didn't have a second. I think Donnie should have had a second. But let's talk about was it a fair fight? Was it a fair fight? Um, no, no. Cause here's the, I didn't know about it. I didn't know about the debate, right? Here's what I didn't know about the debate. Um, here's what I didn't know. I thought it was going to be the same as the last debate. I thought it was on the same channel because I watched it on HBO. I was on HBO. I was watching something. Uh, not a documentary. I can't watch documentaries anymore. Documentaries are shit now. Documentaries used to be thoughtful of things you would learn. Now documentaries are just, they cut to some influencer. And like, oh yeah, so, and it just cuts to TikTok videos. And then they, someone just pieces together TikTok videos. And that's a true crime documentary. That's how this woman went missing. Documentaries are shit now. Nobody makes an effort anymore. Um, but I'm watching some documentary, or, or watching, I think I can't know what I was watching. Maybe the Justice League, uh, the Schneider Cut, the four hour long version. Uh, ben Affleck, controversial, controversial. Ben Affleck, the best Batman. The best Batman. I digress. We move on. Put in the comments, who's your favorite Batman? I'm going to say Ben Affleck. Anyway, uh, and that's not satire. Love Ben Affleck, me. But, um,. So I'm watching on HBO and then it comes up, hey, the debate's on, they click on it and then it says affiliate with CNN. I was like, oh, fuck you, CNN. You, you're another one that's changing your fucking, trying to change the way you do things now just to save face, but whatever. Um, so you go you go to CNN and it's not CNN. I thought it was. And I thought it was going to be the same as, because the last one was fair. The last debate I, I thought was very fair. And I, I mentioned that on my podcast and you can go back and listen to that one. All episodes are available wherever you get your podcast from. But uh, that was a, a fair... There was one moment, though, where, where the guy asked Biden the question and Biden just went, hey, hey, uh, oatmeal raisins. And um, and then the, the, the moderator went, oh, oh, don't you mean... Don't you mean uh, less nuclear arms in the Middle East? Yeah, that's what I meant. Right, so he kind of spoon-fed him the answer. And I thought that was the one... The only one time I thought CNN... Other than that, they were pretty fair. This one... Oh boy, oh boy, was it bullshit. This one, they they cut Donald Trump off, they let her rant, 
and above all, they're fact-checked, right? They're fact-checked, which isn't the job of the mediator. I noticed the, the radiator. I noticed the radiator. <laughs> Words are funny. Anyway, I um, you know, it's not your job. Your job is to just ask the questions and then stop the time. Which, by the way, debates are bullshit. I've said this before. I've said it again. You need to sit these people down on a table, right, with fact checkers for a three-hour, four-hour conversation. That's what a real debate is. That's what a real debate You put them, like, have like someone like Joe Rogan mediate or something like that, right? And he just sits there for three hours and just goes, hey, no, hang on, let's go back, bring this up. Did you say that? I didn't say that. And she can come out and like, you know what that? And she goes, she talks to her nose. So she was like, hey, you know what? You know what? That's what he said about abortions. He said, if you get pregnant, you're a whore and should go to hell. And Donnie go, I didn't say that. But her, but the fans go, oh my God, did he say that? If you have intercourse, you're a whore and you should burn for, for eternity on the fiery lakes of hell? Right? So then you just go, let me fact check that and bring it up. Because she didn't say that word for word, but she really did it, like, kind of nudge that he's an evil man. You know what I mean? He's friends with Putin, and him and Putin were playing golf, and they were saying that they hate that black people have jobs. Right, again, and we go, and, 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 and ABC would just sit there and go, oh, that's terrible. That's terrible that he said that. Right? It was definitely not fair. Here's the part what I thought was unfair. For me anyway, right? And I was watching it. And this is the part that I just... Most people were yelling at their television. Here's the part that was so on That I laughed and guffawed out loud. Where he, the media turns to Kamala Harris. And I'm going to paraphrase this, by the way. You'll have to go back and watch it. So don't say, he didn't say that, Beck. <laughs> um, I'm paraphrasing it. Where he goes, Kamala Harris. Let's talk about is Israel, Palestine. What do you think... Do you think we should bring the hostages home? Now, pause, time out. All hostages should come home. They're hostages, right? If they're a terrorist, you're a prisoner. So hostages are innocent people on either side of the fence. When Ireland and England were fighting, right? During back in the day, I was a kid. I remember the troubles, as they say. There was no, if there was an, if I, the IRA captured English people, English civilians, they're host. They have nothing. To, they're they're not the government. They're not what you're. They're hostages. Let them go. If the English captured Irish people, let them go. They're hostages. All hostages should be let go. That is a no-brainer. That is the simplest question ever. Kamala Harris, do you think hostages should be brought home? I think we should bring home all the hostages. Of course you should. You fucking idiot. Of course the hostages need to come home. No matter what side of the fence you're on with the Israel-Palestine, I ain't getting into that. I ain't getting into, uh, I'm pro-Israel. Oh, I think Palestine are the best. Yeah, fucking bomb them all. I'm not going to say any of that. I've, I've covered this on, on previous episodes. I'm not getting in. This is not me picking a side of Israel, Israel v. Palestine. But all hostages should, if the Israelis had Palestinian hostages, let them go. If the fucking Palestinians have Jewish ho hostages from Israel, let him go. Easiest question in the book. Thank you, Madam Vice President. A woman of color, I might add. Could be the first. Like, that's the kind of little subtleties. Then they turn to Donald Trump. So they go, Kamala Harris, lay up. You look great on that one. That's good. You're Look at that. You're a human being. You're humanitarian. Saving hostages. Donald Trump, staying on the same topic. How would you solve the problem between Israel and Palestine and show us your work? Now, Israel and Palestine, if you are a man of God, right? If you read the Bible, if you read the Old Testament in the Bible, this war is in the Bible. So you're talking about a biblical problem, which, by the way, it only gets solved by the returning of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, it's a biblical problem. You turn to Donald Trump and you ask him to solve a problem as old as the fucking Bible. You ask him to solve a problem that King David, King David himself, King Solomon couldn't solve. He couldn't solve with their armies upon armies. Slaying giants. They could not finish this war. Could not be over. 
in the Bible. This is a biblical war and you ask Trump to solve a biblical war in two minutes. Show us your work. If you can't, if you don't think that's biased, do you know what I mean? Like, like on, I just, I was guffawing at the television. My kids are coming out of bed. What are you doing still up? We're trying to sleep. We got school in the morning. Back to bed, you cunts. I'm paying for this house. Do you know what I mean? Oh, unreal. Now, let's talk about, now here's the thing. I don't know what this is in relation to, uh, I don't know if it has any merit, but let, let's have a look. Let's have a look at this thing that came out. There's a lot of things coming out about now. This one was brought to you by a journalist who is a neutral journalist. Again, fact check, put it in the comments. Mick, we know this guy. He's not a journalist. He's not a fact checker. He is not a, a left-leaning a journalist. He's not a neutral journalist. This guy's been known to uh, go to sex parties with many Republicans. Tell me that. Ben Geller. Ben Geller has released an ABC whistleblower is set to expose a rigged debate revealing two key claims. Number one, the Harris campaign received sample questions that were nearly identical to those asked during the debate. Two, there was a promise that Donald Trump would be fact-checked while Kamala Harris would not face any scrutiny. The whistleblower also points out to several other elements designed to give Kamala Harris significant, that word's blocked, I'm going to say maybe I can move it, a significant edge in the debate. Now, I don't know what that has, uh, if that has any legs, if that has any merit, but, um, and this is, of course, these these times where where uh, people will come out now and they'll go, they'll go, ah, oh, that's 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 you know fake news. That's you know pop a copy copy cop, poppy cocky. What's the word I'm looking for? Whatever. I was trying to be clean there. Bullshit. And I fancy way of saying bullshit. Uh, it is, but it was definitely one sided. And again, I looked at that very neutral. And I, I like I said the first one. I came with the next one. First debate, him and Biden. That wasn't. That was a very neutral. Apart from that one little thing. But there's no way, because she lied so much. And you can go back and you can see all of those lies. All of those lies. Like, I, again, I would have brought, would have loved to have brought them up here on a screen. I'm working on it, folks. I'm working on it. Uh, you know what I mean? I, I, there was no way it was fucking, it was, it was a fair debate. So they're not doing it again. They're not, and here's the thing. I don't think debates have decided anything. So the debate was really a waste of time. It was really a thing to give people fuel. It was really something to give people, make the Trump people more angry. The, 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 which they will vote in anger. We will fucking, you're not fucking, we're not going to take it. They're going to go out and, and the, the, and the, and the, and the Kamala people are like, we well, have to vote. He's such an idiot. Oh my God. I just don't want to see him anymore. He's, he's, I'm voting for him. Uh, I'm voting for her or whatever. Right. So, but again, she doesn't have anything. She doesn't have any policies. Trump, to his to his fault, just sticks to his guns, and he just doesn't he doesn't know how to he doesn't know how to debate. But that's the thing too, man. You can't be good at everything. Maybe maybe he's just weak at debates, and that's okay. That's okay, right? That is fine. Just because he's shit at debates doesn't mean he wasn't a, a, a good, he's not going to be and wasn't a bad president. And we could sit there and we talk about this all day long, and and she was like. Ah, uh, he lost all of these jobs, and we created jobs, right? And you would applaud that. But realistically, you have to understand, he lost jobs because COVID shut down everything. Some of you people listening to this may have lost your job, told to stay home, didn't know what you're going to do. That was because of COVID. That falls because of him. He's not allowed to open places up, right? And then all of a sudden, Biden opens places back up and takes all these jobs back. And he's like, ah, we have created jobs. You didn't create those jobs. Those people went back to work. Those people just went back to work. And people will not be able to call her on that. Right? The people won't be able to call her on that. Just like the Trump people won't be able to go to Trump. Donnie, why are you talking about the fucking pets for? Who gives a shit? Is that true? Is that not true? We don't know. I got a buddy. My name is Brett. He runs the Marvel podcast. One of the most successful, fun Marvel podcasts ever. I've done it twice. I'll be doing it again. He lives in Springfield. I reached out to Brett. My buddy got Brett. Is it happening? Brett told me he lived there. I was like, holy shit, man. We've been talking all this time. I didn't know. I didn't know. And he said, some people are saying it is. Some people are saying they didn't. Well, 
Fact check, Mr. Trump. Uh, the police commissioner said it's not it's not happening. Uh, so you're full of shit, basically. It's not happening. Yeah, also, also there's video footage of, of it happening. Also, the police said that the, the, the Venezuelans taking over the apartment building wasn't happening, right? And we all know that fucking happened. Right? So... It was, and here's the thing. Here, here, here's the, here's what I will say. I have seen videos, and I would love to bring them up, of of Haiti, Haiti, Haitian people coming out of lakes in a nice spring. Let's go for a picnic, darling. Oh, really? What if? What are you up to, Stephen? I just want to go on a picnic. What? I can't take on a picnic. Yeah, but this is not like you. I'm go oh, we're going to our favorite park, and you go there, and Stephen sets out a blanket for you, and he's got a picnic basket or a picnic basket. As Yogi Bear, a picnic basket, boo boo, he would pronounce it. And uh, he's about to propose in your favorite, you know, the daisies are around and the, and the, the pea kids are flying kites and, and people riding by, cha ching, cha ching. The birds are singing, butterflies are flying and dancing off each other. Which I always thought when I saw two butterflies like bounce off each other like that, and we're like, oh, isn't it beautiful? We don't know that a sex crime isn't happening to the other butterfly, but we're standing there going, isn't that beautiful? We don't know what's going on, but yeah, nature is gorgeous, right? We're like, oh, look at that butterfly rape. Anyway, so, and you're in the mood and you're about to pop the question, and then all of a sudden, video footage, guys, video footage, up walks out like fucking, like swamp thing from the Louisiana swamps, comes out of the water, a Haitian guy holding a duck by the fucking neck. I've seen it. Woman, a Haitian woman has cut, saw her uh, take a cat down and, and eat it. Now let's talk about that. That's far-fetched. Okay. It sounds far-fetched, but let's talk about it for a second. Do you know what they eat in Haiti? Oh, Mick, this is going to sound crazy. This is going to, they eat dirt. What, Mick? Now you're a conspiracy theorist. I want you to go to a documentary out where they go there and they show, they talk to the families and it's heartbreaking, by the way. This ain't me shitting on Haiti, on Haiti people, on the people of Haiti. This, you know, it's, it's not me talking about them in a negative way. But watch this documentary. This guy, it's a heartbreaking where they get dirt, they package the dirt, they leave it on the roof to dry, it dries out and then they eat the dirt. It's heartbreaking that a family has to eat dirt to survive. But they eat dirt. So do you think, do you think, that I don't know, by the way, why they don't plant stuff in the dirt. Like, can someone go tell them that? Instead of going, oh, only that dirt, that's bad. Put it in a pot, throw some, throw some zucchinis, some zucchinis there, a bit of potato. It's easy to grow. Leeks, leeks, crest. Little, why you, mushroom, the grow stuff, man. You have the dirt. Stop eating the fucking dirt. Grow stuff in the dirt. The seeds go in the dirt. Tomatoes. Fucking hell, Haiti. Anyway, do you think if they're willing to eat dirt that they're not willing to fucking... They're that hungry that they're willing to eat filth off the ground that they're not going to want to eat a delicious-looking fucking Yorkshire Terrier? Do you not... Here's another thing. Google this, right? If you Google what's the number one religion in, in Haiti, they're going to tell you, they're going to tell you it is Christianity, right? Okay, and I'm back in a second. got to shut this computer thing over because uh, it's going to shut down if I don't. It does this. I've been going for an hour and a half on this uh, thing to keep my show previous page. That should bring up. Oh, there's a commercial. Well, another interracial couple. That doesn't make sense. Those I can never see those two together. Anyway, um, what's the number one religion in in Haiti? And they will tell you it, it, it's it's they're Christian, right? It's it's uh, Catholicism, Catholics. But if you if you Google is voodoo practiced in Haiti, it will say most people practice voodoo than christianity most people the reason why they don't say what's the most popular religion in in haiti the reason why they didn't say voodoo is because voodoo isn't considered a religion it's considered witchcraft so there is animal sacrifices there is fucking nailing organs over doors to bless them with their weird evil gods but that's my point. That is my point, right? And ladies, here's what I'll say, and I'll leave it on this. I'll leave it on this, 
right? If you're out there and you think to yourself, I would love a foreign man. I think I'm sick of these Americans, sick of these chads, guys in the gym just looking how worried about how good they are. They're loud, right? They start every sentence with bro. I'm, I'm looking for an exotic man from a different country. If you find another man from a different country and in his bio he says, I, lo I, I love, love eating pussy. Just make sure you ask him to be specific. Because the last thing you want to do is bring him home expecting a good old time, right? Expecting a good old bit of a munching. And all of a sudden you look back and she's, uh, he's after filling up on Felix. All right? The last thing, last thing you want, filling up on Felix is what you don't want that. Anyway, listen, I have to go. I did was a bit long episode. One, how long was that one? Oh my goodness, 38, 30 minutes. That's way much longer than you guys deserve. Thanks for liking, subscribing, sharing, and coming on back. I do appreciate you. Go see me live. And as always, wash your hands, you dirty fuckers. Good luck to you. Good luck to you.